It seems like everyone is doing a podcast these days. And one of the reasons I think everyone is doing that is because you can create short form content which can elevate your personal brand, give people a deeper insight into you, and you can just have wonderful conversations with incredible people and feel inspired every single day. So in this video, I'm gonna be breaking down five steps, this is 10, five steps to create your own podcast so that you can start your own journey. So hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're an OG, thank you so much for supporting me to create these videos for you every single week. Now, I've broken this down into five really simple steps. So grab your notebooks, grab a cup of tea, and let's get into it. Now, the first step is obviously you need an idea. What is your podcast going to be about? What are you going to be talking about? What is your niche? Are you going to be storytelling? Is it going to be interview style content? Is it going to be educational content? Is it going to be funny? What is it that you actually want to be speaking about? And here, I think you really need to understand is if you want to do solo episodes or you actually want to do episodes with a guest. Now, I've spoken about this before. I would always recommend that you do interviews with guests because it actually elevates your brand more because you're not only attracting your own audience, you're actually tapping into their own audience. And that's what I did in the beginning. I never thought about it though. I just saw other people doing podcasts with guests and therefore I thought that's the only way you could do a podcast. Now I'm obviously tapping more into these solo episodes where I'm a little bit more confident, but still not 100% confident because I've had that experience with a guest and therefore I've had lots of experience on camera. So the camera bit doesn't freak me out, the structure does because I'm always used to bouncing off a guest. So I think it's really important to understand which one you wanna do. And from that really start to think about what is the essence of your podcast gonna be? If you had to create an elevator pitch and tell someone about it in 30 seconds, what value are they gonna get from listening to your podcast? There's over 3 million podcasts out there, but there's nothing stopping you from creating your own because your ideas and what you wanna share will be totally different from someone else. And what I will say, even if it's the same thing as someone else is saying, will resonate with a completely different audience because I will make it my own. And so don't be afraid of thinking that, oh my gosh, every idea is out there is saturated. Every field in the world is kind of saturated right now. Think about what you're really passionate about, what you're good at, where your expertise lie, and what you wanna talk about, and then start to think about, okay, well, how exactly am I gonna display this to my audience? Now, step two is actually thinking about planning and content creation. And what I mean here is actually, what are you gonna be breaking down in each episode? Now, like I said, when I started, I only recorded two episodes and then once I released the first episode I started to think about all the other episodes I wanted to do but for a long 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 time I'd actually thought about okay if I got this guest on I'll talk about this if I got this guest on I'll talk about that and I really started this by thinking about what am I passionate about what do I want to talk about I knew that I always wanted to have controversial and taboo topics on my podcast because as a South Asian girl I never felt like I had a platform or a conversation to really explain my viewpoints Every time I would, it would turn into some kind of debate or argument. And I would often feel scared and I couldn't really have a structured conversation around it where you're hearing two different sides to a story, you're discussing it and you're learning from one another. And so it was really important for me to be bringing up these issues and therefore I kind of already knew what my topics were gonna be about. Again here, if you're doing it by yourself, Think about the structure, how you're gonna explain that to your audience, and I can do another video about how I structure my videos. But also, if you're doing it with a guest, start to think about how guests can actually align to each of those videos and each of those topics, and can you get experts within that field to be talking to you around that particular topic? A content calendar is really, really important where you think about, okay, well, when do I want to release my episodes? Let's think about traditional TV. You know that your TV show is going to be on at a particular time every week. When I was younger, I would watch The Apprentice and I knew that every Wednesday at nine o'clock, The Apprentice would be on and therefore I would watch that. I also knew that Desperate Housewives would be on straight after at 10 o'clock, which I wasn't allowed to watch. So when my parents were watching it downstairs, I used to stand by the door and either try and listen in from downstairs or sneak into their room and watch it from their TV. But I knew at every week it would be on and I'd be excited about it. And that's what you wanna do with your audience. You wanna get them excited, you wanna keep them waiting, you wanna have a really strict schedule so that they know every week they can rely on you. I did not do this in the beginning and I actually think it was detrimental to my growth. And look, sometimes it's really hard to get the podcast out, the audio is wrong, the video is wrong, whatever, there's a, a exporting issue. I've had all of these problems and sometimes it doesn't happen. Really, really try to make sure you stick to a strict schedule because that's going to make sure you're retaining an audience every single week too. 
Okay, now the third point, recording and equipment. I started with an audio podcast. I had a 50 pound mic, which I will link. And then after that, I was actually going to record on Riverside and Zoom where I moved to a video podcast. And after that, I moved to a studio. So I think it's really important to do this gradually because investing in a studio can be really expensive. And also a lot of the time we think we need to record with really fancy equipment. My camera is actually a bit dead at the moment. So I'm recording on my iPhone right now. And so you can really start by just getting a mic and recording on your iPhone because I would say the most important thing is the audio. We all think the video is the most important and that's the mistake I've made many, many times. But actually the audio is more important because someone will listen to something more than they will probably watch something when they're on the go. And podcasts are generally, you know, listened to on the go. And someone will kind of watch something and and it's said that people will watch through a rubbish video visually, but they won't listen to a rubbish audio. And so audio is meant to be the most important thing. I've also done another video about how to start a podcast for under $100 and I've listed loads of equipment. So if you want to watch that, I'll put that on screen here. Now, the next step is editing. I'll use Final Cut Pro, but you can use CapCut, which I've actually used recently because my videos went in sync and someone showed me how to use it, which was fantastic. You can also use iMovie on your laptop, which is what I use first. If you have a MacBook, that's what I use first. But like I said, you can use so many different other apps and there's loads of YouTube tutorials to show you how to use any of these apps. And they're quite actually straightforward and easy. Now, the last point is publishing and promotion. Now, when I started my podcast, I was using Libsyn, but actually I would recommend using Spotify for podcasters, which was bought out recently. It was called Anchor previously, but I use that at the moment and I find it super, super easy because it basically publishes the podcast onto whichever platforms that I want, which are it's Google Podcasts, whether it's on Apple, whether it's on Spotify, there's loads of others as well, which I won't name, but there are other platforms like Buzzsprout and Podbean, I think, which you can use, but I would always recommend using a Spotify for podcasters because it's super easy. It's really, really simple. And actually, I think you'll be able to get paid from using it soon too which is fantastic there you have it five really easy steps for you to start for you to start your podcast today i have another video on how to start a podcast for a hundred dollars i have another video about why i started my podcast and generally loads of podcasting videos about how you can make money how you can grow your podcast how i used the book atomic habits to grow my podcast and loads of other things on my channel. So if you want to check those out, please do. But if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please comment and let me know what I can improve. Let me know what you want to know more about me. And I'd be so grateful if you could subscribe to this channel because it's brand new and I'm really trying to grow it. I really hope you have a wonderful morning, afternoon or evening wherever you're watching this. And I hope to see you very, very, very soon.